Hello everybody, E here, back again with another Stephen King list. Today we are talking about the top five Stephen King movie adaptations, or movie adaptations of Stephen King's work, however you want to put it. Um, I do not have all of King's stuff, and I especially don't have uh, some of the ones that are on this list, so I'm just going to hold the books up, okay? I have an honorable mention, first and foremost, this one is tied with number five. So I guess this would be number six. Um... Salem's Lot, uh, the Toby Hooper TV series. Uh, I still have the glit the, it's one of the most iconic scenes in all of television history, movie history, the, uh, Danny Glick at the window, and, uh, Barlow, um, I always get those two confused, is it Barlow or is it Straker? Which one's the vampire? Anyways, um, him, his eyes opening in the casket. Oh, two scenes. So this is like an honorable mention, number six, whatever. Number five is Rita Hayworth and the Shawshank Redemption, or, as we know it, the Shawshank Redemption with Tim Robbins and Morgan Freeman. Um, so that one's number five. You're going to see a lot of hate because it's so low on the list, but that's how I feel. Number four is also in this one, um, Stand By Me or The Body. It says right here, Stand By Me. Um, based on the novella The Body. Uh, I grew up watching that movie, love that movie, um, Will Wheaton, um, Corey Feldman, uh, all those guys. The movie is pitch perfect, um, it does deviate, I mean the biggest deviation is it doesn't even happen in, uh, ca uh, in Castle Rock, it happens in, well, it, sorry, Portland. Is it Portland? Yeah, they changed Portland, Maine to, I think, Portland, Oregon in the movie with Dreyfus. But anyways, it's a great movie, uh, so that's number four and number five are in this one. Next up, this this one's funny because I actually prefer the movie over the book. And go ahead and start raging down there in the uh, in in the doobly doo. Christine, of course, John Carpenter's amazing uh, adaptation of this bloated book. I give it I give the book three stars. But we're not talking about the book. Well, I, I think I've already well I have already discussed it in Thursday Theorist, but. Um, I think the the movie cut out all the parts that I I mean it's cut out all the parts that I hated from the book, um, and this I mean this version is I mean, it's, it's big nice seven hundred page I think the regular hardcover is like five hundred pages, but it was a perfect movie experience. The book is not a perfect reading experience, even though um, I have some friends who this is their their number one Stephen King book. Anyhow. Next up, we have two of the newest adaptations, and people are finally starting to give Stephen King the the budget, Stephen King stories, the budget that they deserve. So we have Gerald's Game, and my wife is behind the camera right now, nodding her head because she watched it with me. She ain't even read the book. They this this movie is just not only is it a terrific Stephen King adaptation, but it is just a damn good movie period. Um, they handled the last bit where Jesse is... Oh, wow. I don't think I ever realized that. I'm sorry, I just... We'll do this. There's writing all on the last page of this book. I don't think I've ever read the, the back of this one. Plus, it looks like something's smeared all over the place. That's a... Uh, that's unfortunate. Did I ever tell you guys about the... Le I'll tell you guys about Lisey's story. I have a story about Lisey... The, one, one, of the, one of those. I'm all thrown off my game. Let's get back on this video. So, Gerald's Game movie adaptation is terrific. Um, I don't think there's a single thing that they changed that I didn't love that actually worked better than, than the book. The stuff that they changed. Um, the stuff that they got right, they got right, and they nailed it. And not only are they giving Stephen King's books a better budget... But better filmmakers are taking their time, at, you know, taking their time to actually tackle his back catalog. J.J. Uh, Abrams with the eleven twenty two sixty three series, um, and he's also doing the Hulu series Castle Rock, which I'm super excited about. Um, next up, we have I think everybody knows what's coming. It, the twenty seventeen version, of course. Um, Bill Skarsgård. Uh, really, he, he embodied not only Pennywise. Tim Curry was a great Pennywise. Tim Curry was not a good it. Um, the, if you've read the novel, you know there's much more to this creature than just the clown. And while Tim Curry nailed the clown, it, everything else, the, the special effects of the day, all that stuff, I just never felt like he was bigger 
than what we were seeing. Whereas with the Skarsgård version, he feels like he feels like a puppet. He even looks like a puppet with the way he walks and moves and everything. And one of my favorite scenes is when it's in, that spoilers for the movie if you haven't seen it is when he flops down on the bottom of the stairs and he kind of slithers back. I mean, that speaks so much more to a bigger entity than what you were seeing. Like, there's a whole lot of body off screen. Um, I've got, there are problems with the movie. It is not perfect, but only because I am a purist. I am a Stephen King purist. They nerfed Mike Hanlon. They nerfed Stan. And the worst part about the Stan nerfing is if you watch the Blu-ray, 4K, whatever, they show Stan's extra scenes, and they are great. I don't know why they... Well, they cut it for time. They had to have, but... They had to have, but um, the thing is, if you add those scenes back in, we're only talking about ten more minutes at the most. Um, there's a scene, especially when at his, uh, I think it's his bar mitzvah, um, or whatever, whatever that, uh, it might not be. So if I offend any Jewish people out there, I apologize, but I got it wrong, <laughs> if, if I got it wrong. But this one, uh, with Stan, he had, he had big character development scenes in the movie, and they just got rid of them. So I was upset about that, especially knowing he, they should have never put it in the in the extra features because now I know that there was supposed to be something there. Um, Mike, I'm still upset about Mike, but I, I I I can't help but feel that if I don't give this the number one spot, I'm not doing it justice because it is uh, the 2017 version of it is the best Stephen King adaptation. So that's my number one. What's your list? I know you guys disagree with me, and I know there's going to be a whole gang of you people upset. <laughs> whole gang of you guys upset that I didn't put Green Mile on this list. Um, every time I leave it off, somebody, even my wife's back there nodding her head. Um, so <laughs> leave your list down there in the doobly-doo. Uh, until next time, I have been E, you have been you. It's been another Stephen King list. Talk to you guys later. Bye-bye.